Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Monday, June the 8th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light do we see light. O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the evildoers lie fallen, they are thrust down, unable to rise. New Testament reading this evening is from John chapter 12, beginning in verse 20. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show what by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is still in Part 3, the Lord's Prayer, the fifth petition. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This part now applies to our poor, miserable life. Although we have and believe God's word, do and submit to his will, and are supported by his gifts and blessings, our life is still not sinless. We still stumble daily and transgress because we live in the world among people. They do us much harm and give us reasons for impatience, anger, revenge, and such. Besides, we have the devil at our back. He attacks us from every side and fights, as we have heard, against all the previous petitions. So it is not possible to stand firm at all times in such a constant conflict. There is here, again, great need for us to call upon God and to pray, Dear Father, forgive us our trespasses. It is not as though he did not forgive sin without and even before our prayer. 
he has given us the gospel, which is pure for forgiveness before we prayed or ever thought about it. But the purpose of this prayer is that we may recognize and receive such forgiveness. The flesh in which we daily live is of such a nature that it neither trusts nor believes God. It is ever active in evil lusts and dev devices, so that we sin daily in word and deed, by what we do and fail to do. By this the conscience is thrown into unrest, so that it is afraid of God's wrath and displeasure. So it loses the comfort and confidence derived from the gospel. Therefore, it is always necessary that we run here and receive consolation to comfort the conscience again. But this should serve God's purpose of breaking our pride and keeping us humble. God has reserved this right for himself. If anyone wants to boast of his godliness and despise others, that person is to think about himself and place this prayer before his eyes. He will find that he is no better than others, and that in God's presence all must tuck their tails and be glad that they can gain forgiveness. Let no one think that as long as he lives here, he can reach such a position that he will not need such forgiveness. In short, if God does not forgive without stopping, we are lost. It is therefore the intent of this position, petition that God would not regard our sins and hold up to us what we daily deserve. But we pray that he would deal graciously with us and forgive, as he has promised, and so grant us a joyful and confident conscience to stand before him in prayer. For where the heart is not in a right relationship with God or cannot take such confidence, it will not dare to pray anymore. Such a confident and joyful heart can spring from nothing else than the certain knowledge of the forgiveness of sin. There is here attached a necessary yet comforting addition, as we forgive. He has promised that we shall be sure that everything is forgiven and pardoned in the way that we also forgive our neighbor. Just as we daily sin much against God, and yet he forgives everything through, our, through grace, so we too must ever forgive our neighbor who does us injury, violence, and wrong shows malice toward us, and so on. If, therefore, you do not forgive, then do not think that God forgives you. But if you forgive, you have this comfort and assurance that you are forgiven in heaven. This is not because of your forgiving, for God forgives freely and without condition out of pure grace, because he has so promised as the gospel teaches. But God says this in order that he may establish forgiveness as our confirmation and assurance as a sign alongside of the promise, which agrees with this prayer. In Luke 6.37, forgive and you will be forgiven. Therefore, Christ also repeats it soon after the Lord's Prayer and says in Matthew 6.14, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, and so on. This sign is therefore attached to this petition. When we pray, we remember the promise and think, dear Father, for this reason I come and pray for you to forgive me not so I can make satisfaction or merit anything by my works. I pray because you have promised and attached the seal to this prayer, and that I should be as sure about it as though I had absolution pronounced by you yourself. For baptism in the Lord's Supper, appointed as outward signs, work as seals. In the same way also, this sign can serve to confirm our consciences and cause them to rejoice. It is especially given for this purpose so that we may use and practice forgiveness every hour as a thing that we have with us at all times. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers, bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all dangers of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church in the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law in the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Merciful God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross that he might bear the sins of the world and draw all people to himself. Grant that we who glory in his death for our redemption may faithfully heed his call to bear the cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.